Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, we're going to take a look at uh, the Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife this month. Uh, we're going to take a look at a buck, a uh, fun-looking buck in the uh, Knife Life News, and then overseas budget folder favorites right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. <music> Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from last week was from Lone Wolf. He says, questions, sir. What is a mamaluke? And a mamaluke is a dunce, kind of just a dunce. In Italian. And what about another Nova knife with a Chris blade or a Sax blade? Uh, a lot of people have mentioned Warren Cliffs. Uh, that's because I have mentioned Warren Cliffs. That is the blade I intend uh, the Nova 2 to be. Uh, it's just that I have not designed the right one yet. I haven't uh, haven't zeroed in on it. But that indeed, Lone Wolf, is what uh, is what it's going to be. A Chris blade. Um, I do like a Chris blade, uh, but I do want to keep it short and there's not a lot of room in uh, three and a quarter inches. I know that's ordinarily uh, below my, well, in, in three and a half inches, not a lot of room for too many curves, uh, but I hadn't thought of a, of a Chris. So that is definitely food for thought. Lone Wolf, thanks for the comment and thanks one and all for watching and commenting. It's greatly appreciated. Gets the, uh, the juices flowing. Uh, that's for sure. All right, all that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today, I was carrying this Tucson knives uh, knife. This is kind of what inspired the subject of uh, today's discourse. And uh, I've been kind of, well... Honestly, I was trying to sell a bunch of my high value uh, overseas produced folders and was finding it difficult because this one not included. Uh, they just were um, maybe a little less expensive than is almost economical to sell and ship uh, without bundling. And I've always had difficulty in bundling. So anyway, it got me to take a look at some of these knives and uh, uh, a second look. And I've been you know, using them and carrying them a bit more. And this one and uh, the other two son that's on my list later, uh, I have been marveling at. They are inexpensive, very well built with very high quality materials like titanium and 14C and other better blade steels than that, uh, micarta. This one is such a great design. This is the, the knife I've wanted to carry for years and years and years. It kind of it's the realistic yet mall ninja aesthetic that, uh, you know, still has me since I was a young boy. And uh, I love this thing. It's a, it's a great cutter, too. Did used it a lot for boxes today. So a great cutter is that that recurve really helps trap the material uh, in the in the cut and just accelerates what you're doing. Love that thing. Tucson TS336. Uh, also in my pocket for anti in anticipation of something new, uh, I was carrying the Little Bro Jack from Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, their boy's knife, this is like the GEC number 15 in size and character. It's that sleeve board pattern, uh, very neutral, uh, extremely comfortable, usable handle in any grip. Uh, obviously, it, it, is, it is just a, uh, the, the, the perfect slip joint handle uh and then paired with the perfect slip joint blade that really nice long swoop deep bellied um clip point with the high hollow ground in this case m390 blade steel uh, the blade steels have uh, changed to s 90 v i think we're three knives in with the new steel uh to me it's tomato tomato they're all way more steel than i deserve uh but um, I'm happy to have them, <laughs> especially in their hollow ground nature. Uh, I do love the little bro, Jack. Next up on me, uh, I'm falling back in love with this knife as I have been uh, beginning to appendix carry my fixed blade knives. And this one fits great 
with how I carry it kind of on the right side appendix. Uh, this is the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick. Uh, they are out of Texas, as you can see from the proud uh, logo star there. Uh, that is the Lone Star of Tejas. Uh, beautiful double-edged. Uh, this is a Pical knife, so originally uh, the, the pick or the ditch pick in this case, ditch referring to the 16th of an inch thick or thin, you might say, blade stock. Um, so all of their ditch models are in that thin blade stock. Uh, this run, he was offering full double-edged, uh, single-edged pickal or bayonet-edged pickal, meaning the outer edge coming up halfway, which I, I got to say looks wicked, wicked cool. But I got to... I also have to say that I would I knew I would have regretted not getting a full double edge. Do you know what I'm talking about, people? Do you hear me, Cleveland? Uh, that's like the best way to get applause when you're a rock, a rock band. Like uh, in, in any case, uh, double edge is the way to go with this. And I'm, I'm very glad I did because it's almost can't tell if it's an upswept, you know, Persian style double edged small knife or is it a Pakal knife, you know, with the with the full double edge. Uh, anyway, I love that knife and JB Knife and Tool. They are awesome. Uh, go check them out. Instagram, I think, is the place to do that. And lastly, uh, this little knife has been hard to get out of my rear uh, left pocket. The CJRB Pyrite, so fidgety and so uh, strong, actually, uh, button lock and the perfect uh, set depth for the button. Um, Easy to get without having to do too much manipulation uh, in uh, pushing that button in and uh, great for fidget, but also uh, it happens to be a tough little bugger. And I, I haven't had it happen yet where I accidentally engage the lock with my uh, finger. And I'll, the toughest thing I've done with this is go through cardboard. But still, you know, after a little while, you might end up changing grips and stuff. And I did not find the button lock an issue. Um, <clears throat> and no sense of, or no chance of it failing, I don't think, under normal use with the sharp pocket that that plunge lock sits in, as opposed to that conical shape uh, that most of them have. All right, so this is what I had in my pocket today, the Tucson TS-336, the Little Bro Jack from Jack Wolf Knives, the JB Knife and Tool Ditch Pick, Double Edge, and the CJRB button lock pyrite a definite uh fidget friendly knife there what were you guys carrying uh drop it down there in the comments let me know i like to find out what everyone carries uh sometimes it offers inspiration other times it just makes me say you know i got a classy audience and i like that uh so that's what i had on me gentleman junkie knife giveaway is coming up real soon and we're going to be giving away this right here. This was given to us by uh, Kerry of Off Grid Knives. He sent this and two others, uh, the Coyote and the All Black. And I claimed the Coyote. Uh, it had the, they all have great action, but to me, it was the one that was uh, required maybe a little bit of break in. So I took that one for myself and uh, a very, very generous move on my part, you know, to break that in. Uh, but this one is butter smooth right out of the box, super sharp. Uh, you got that tumbled finish, very handsome uh, knife. I love the center line point on the Tonto blade. Uh, I must admit, I was never a fan of it in terms of how it looks. I always like liked the upswept nature of, say, a cold steel Tonto. Um, but having this and using it with that point in the center, I love it. And I think it's also kind of dagger like too. Um, but there's, it's very easy to, to use that tip without having to uh, crank your wrist at all. So very, very nice blade and very nice uh, 154 CM edge. And you've got that awesome file work and jimping, kind of a double jimping effect on the spine. Really great knife. Uh, thank you, Carrie. And I'm going to pass along that good fortune uh, to a gentleman junkie uh, this month, April 2023. All that being said, uh, I want to go over a couple of new knives uh, that are coming out and uh, that I spotted on Knife News. So uh, here we go. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the CRKT Knife Life has News. has always been known for taking design chances and doing a lot of sort of audacious and innovative stuff uh, for a pretty uh, relatively low price point. And, uh, you know, this is, we're talking high innovation in big big box stores sometimes, uh, some of the great knives they've had on offer over the years, lots of great designers making budget knives through CRKT. Ken Onion has been one of them. He's made uh, part of his career uh, with the CRKT knives. And recently, CRKT has been pushing to uh, up the game for those of us uh, knife aficionados and knife junkies out there who appreciate the designers they bring on board but want a little more in terms of build and, and that kind of thing. So they've had a couple of knives that they've partnered with uh, Hogue to put out some uh, American knives. And uh, now they, ha- they have the great Ken Onion uh, with two knives of a same series called the Facet series uh, with knives coming out through Lion Steel. So these are made by Lion Steel. by CRKT and uh, being built by Lion Steel. And I got to say, uh, this is, okay, 3.3 reverse... Tonto M390 titanium, uh, two different themes. The facet, uh, this is the facet viral, and then there's the facet rivet, uh, which looks like the side of a piece of uh, military materiel. Uh, I gotta say, Ken Onions, uh, I'm not speaking directly to Mr. Onion himself about this design, but I gotta say, I'm very underwhelmed by the design, and I know that Ken Onion is known for a certain curvaceous and very organic uh, looking knife. And I, and you know, throughout, uh, you know, that look throughout many, many, many of his designs. And I know he's been evolving out of that and breaking that and doing different stuff. But to me, they're just not as exciting uh, as some of his older designs. So this one to me uh, feels like, ah, oh, it's too bad that they went with this one because Ken Onion, um, I don't know, uh, the designs that he's really, uh, that the look that he's really known for, I think, is how they should have gone. This is, eh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Am I being too harsh? Uh, I like the idea that they have Lion Steel doing it, but that also could possibly uh, cause a problem or two. Um, anyway, that this is what we have coming from CRKT. I like it because uh, they're 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 trying to pull out the stops and uh, 500 pieces only and making them collectible. I just, I'm not so sure about this design. All right, let's move on. Uh, Next is from Buck, another American company doing something weird. Also Uh, their Buck Budgie is a uh, great little knife came out in 2021 steel frame lock G10 on the show side featuring S35 VN for under a hundred bucks. That was the Budgie. Uh, that was its USP. Well, here they have a Cerakoted version. That's an aluminum show side so that they could Cerakote it and a steel uh, lock bar side uh, and a Cerakoted blade. This is all about uh, the high material, the S35VN, but also making it look like a budgie, a budgeridgery. What did they call that? Uh, uh, a parakeet. Budgie is a, a, a shortened name for it, I think, in native something something all right that's where i'm gonna leave that but uh the budgie uh what do you think of this it's cute right um this this is a cool little uh thing to do uh i don't know s35 vn that's a a paul boss heat treat 825 pieces uh so i say why not it's the mango bird i could see you know you're living in a uh tropical climate you you want a cheerful knife this this will do the trick uh, anyway, I like that Buck is doing things. All right, next uh, from Maniago Knife Makers, that's MKM, uh, another Jesper Voxnez design. He, I love his designs. Uh, this one here looks a little, you know, it it's part, it's the same but different. 
you can see the the Vox design in it, but it's not so Vox up in your face. A compact tools there, you got a lockback, uh, N690, that, that, that ubiquitous European blade steel, and that's a 2.83 inch drop point hollow ground blade. I think it's a fetching little, uh, what do you want to call it, like a Delica replacement. Uh, a lockback FRN point connector wire clip. I think that's a pretty cool little knife, I got to say. And I think that coloration in particular uh catches my fancy now the question is with that lozenge uh, shaped opening hole are you flipping it open are you reverse flicking that uh i think a lot of new knives uh lockback knives out there are are flippable you know even some triad locks so be interesting to see about that with this all right uh lastly in knife life news a boker and poltergeist i love poltergeist blade works um jacob and i don't know how to pronounce his last name um but jacob w over there the man behind uh poltergeist blade works uh have uh, done a couple of collaborations as have a few other companies uh, like real steel and he's just got a very cool design aesthetic so he has his take uh of the valley song it's called the faction and uh look at that you can see the uh, pivots are those big oversized pivots that are part of uh jacob's designs and those titanium handles are going to be nice and light. They're on bearings. And then you have that really cool S35VN drop point. And, and as is traditional for a Bally song, it's a big blade, even though it's not the full, you know, four and a quarter inch, it's 3.74 uh, inches. So about a half an inch uh, short of the, of the traditionally large size. Um, drop point, beautiful. Titanium tip up right hand loop over clip which is something I like to see. Uh, that's kind of one thing I wish they put on the Lucha. The Kershaw Lucha, Lucha is a, a clip because that's something I would like to carry a little more often. So uh, that is the uh, that is the news, <laughs> all the news that's fit to cut. And uh, right here in a minute, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection and also some overseas budget favorites. This just came in yesterday, and uh, it is the big bro Jack. I love this artwork here. Let me show you the sticker. The sticker might do it more better justice here. You can see it says family there, and then you see a big bro, big uh, barrel-chested wolf, and then in front of him a scrawny wolf. That was me, the scrawny wolf, and uh, I have an awesome big bro and so this, I carried the little bro today, knowing that the big bro was going to be showing up. And uh, so just to remind you, this is the little bro sleeve board, boy's knife there. And then this right here, I'll do this in front of the mic so you can hear it. And then I'll show it. Ah, such walk and talk. This is the big bro. This knife has already seen more action and more like, uh, uh, well, more cardboard action, big thick cardboard boxes than any of my other Jack Wolves. Uh, I've babied them, I must admit, especially the Warncliffs and the ones with the very delicate tips. Uh, but today I got this and I just felt moved. I also had a bunch of boxes to dispatch and I was trying out a couple and this just slipped right through all sorts of cardboard. And uh, a, a way that I really like to cut cardboard is probably dangerous and not advised but i like to pull the knife towards me just exactly how i'm not supposed actually it's more like i'm pulling the cardboard away but you can kind of guide your cut and watch it cut um and this thing just did a great job at that this neutral handle it gives you a lot to hold on to i believe that's a four inch handle three and a quarter three and three quarters inch handle don't quote me, obviously. Uh, you got a nice big shooting notch. You could sharpen this a long time, get a lot of life out of that edge. And then this run, this uh, Big Bro Jack, is the last knife of the Jack Wolf knives to feature micarta. 
and uh, and Duncan was kind of an Akarta example and really a bit. And I uh, want to show it next to the little bro and uh, show you how great this looks. Look at those beauties. Um, that big one, really, you do feel uh, like you can do a lot of great work with that knife and uh, feel pretty confident with it in hand. Uh, so this is the new uh, Big Bro Jack. Very excited about this. And uh, this will be available on Friday. The uh, I will get the date for you. <laughs> all right. So putting that down, this comes with all the usual swag. I will set that aside. Next up, I wanted to show last week I showed Monty Kalarka's pairing knife. Well, I got another one. And he made it lickety split for my buddy's 50th birthday. And I got it just in time for his birthday. And then it ends up his wife spirited him away to Jamaica. So I didn't get a chance to give this to him on his birthday. But uh, in a pinch and with not very much time, Steve knocked one of these out for me and got it to me. For his birthday i can't wait to give it to him uh you can see that olive drab canvas micarta and black red and black liners so beautiful and just thin as the day is long and slicey as as you can imagine uh these knives are awesome so i just wanted to show that off it's a uh, black micarta pins uh show it off because it's in my possession for longer than i expected so uh, a very nice knife and uh you should definitely consider getting a custom made kitchen knife because I would venture to say you use your kitchen knives probably more than anything else, more consistently than anything else. So getting a custom kitchen knife, something not too fancy, maybe something you're not afraid to bang around, you know, not just when you have guests over and uh, yeah, you should do that. I highly recommend it. And I can highly recommend Steve Kalari Custom Knives. All right. Uh, next up, this was sent to me uh, to check out by the designer, Colin Maison-Pierre. This is his tonic. Uh, we were talking before about um, fidgety, the fidgety nature or lack thereof of certain kind of folders. And in, in this case, the backlock. And some, as I mentioned before, some backlock knives like some of the triad locks are quite jitty. Uh, they give you plenty of room on the Ricasso to catch the blade with your forefinger uh, without cutting yourself when closing it. And they're smooth and they oftentimes pop open. But what's different about this knife is something that uh, Colin Maison-Pierre designed into this. He put on the lock, you can see the lock face here for the um, for the back lock has a ball bearing on it. So when you're opening it, the ball bearing is what's dragging across the circular part of the tang, not the full uh, lock bar. So the resistance is less and you can pop it open. And it is, man, this, this is such a great knife. Uh, I, I, I was kind of afraid to receive it because I, I really like it a lot. Um, there's this milling that runs through the handle, these grooves that run through the handle. It's got uh, titanium bolsters, very nice and thin that you get from uh, a back lock like this and just a perfect lineup and everything about this. This is high end best tech and high end design. And I best tech is going to feature in the, um, uh, in my overseas budget favorite folders, uh, they they do a lot of great OEM stuff and they design license a lot of great designs, but uh, they're really high end stuff like this and uh, some others like the cones craft knives. I really have to check out more of because uh, I think, I think best tech is right up there and this design is awesome. That blade is so nice. This would benefit also from a size up. I would love to see this in a, three and a half or 3.75 inch bladed uh, version, but uh, you know, dare we dream, that's probably not what sells. All right, so let's take a look at some of these overseas budget folder favorites. Now, uh, it's kind of like saying some of my favorite Chinese knives, but uh, some of these are designed by, um, some of these are, are licensed designs by uh, designers 
and makers, as opposed to designers and makers using these companies as OEMs. Uh, there are plenty of those also. I just didn't include them in this list. Uh, first up, though, is from a great designer. This is uh, Ostap Hell, and this is his best tech, Behai, and it's part of his bou bouquet series. Uh, I always want to say boutique, bouquet series. So these are knives that have a very organic uh, looks to them, and, and they are all inspired by various flowers, exotic flowers, and, uh, and hence the bouquet line. Uh, sort of moniker. Uh, this one came out not too long ago and uh, won my heart. It's not as easy for me to manipulate with my left hand as it is my right, uh, but it is small and very useful. And um, I like to think of it as quite a wicked little knife, but it's also very useful. My youngest daughter used this to cut out uh, a, um, a project, pieces of paper uh, on a cutting mat that was going to be mounted to a poster board. And this was a perfect size and that um, very utilitarian hawk tip blade there was great for following uh, dotted lines. You know, as soon as kids can use knives instead of scissors, I'm all for it. Scissors are kind of imprecise, I think. But with the knife, uh, project looks so much better. This, of course, is a front flipper, and they did a great job with these. They fall shut, even though they're tiny, they fall shut like nothing. Uh, so great, great little blade falling shut. Okay, next up, this is a this is a classic. This is a current iteration of a classic, and that is the Civivi Praxis, one of the three models that came out. If you remember back when the Praxis first came out, you had your choice of like blue anodized liners or gold anodized liners, all shiny. And I just thought they were tacky, but I always loved the design. And Civivi, you know, changed and kind of got with it real quick in terms of uh, some of the finishing touches and making them look more like people like us like. And uh, this version of this knife, I think, is stunning with that. Wood, I think that's Coca Bolo. Um, it's a very nice wood. And uh, next to the D2, that's coated and tumbled, uh, coated black and tumbled. It just uh, looks great. Um, very thin and tall, flat grind on that leaf shaped blade. You've got a full finger choil there and excellent, excellent uh, uh, liner lock action, deep carry pocket clip. Um, so this is a Civivi. Uh, in-house design, and I I love it. Nearly four inches. Uh, this is going to be one of my favorites from them. Uh, next, this one is one that I've talked about a lot recently. This is the Senkut Watuaga. Uh, Senkut is the uh, budget brand for Civivi, which is the budget brand for Wii. So this is uh, this is Wii's uh, grand grandchild. <laughs> uh, hanging out in the basement, doing, uh, making cool designs. I feel like Sencut is where it's at. Uh, Civivi also, uh, with the less expensive knives and less expensive productions, they're willing to take more design chances. And I think this Sencut uh, was very popular right out out of the gate. Uh, this watch, watch well, um, with that Warncliffe, very nice Warncliffe blade and the button lock action. Um, we can see it now echoed through some of the more expensive Wii productions. Um, great blade, again, very thin, like uh, like Wii and Senkut does, very thin and very slicey. Um, great uh, cutting action, and then very, very nice action in terms of opening and closing. Uh, it is nice to have a slightly less convex, I'm sorry, concave uh, button. I understand they don't want it accidentally actuated, but uh, for me, it's not a problem. What's more of a problem is really having to dig your finger in there uh, to get it to close. But again, problem, first world problem. Uh, nice uh, fuller action as well. You can flip it open using that fuller. Nice micarta, the whole the whole nine yards. I love this thing. But as as I mentioned, there is a bit of really digging in the thumb to get that to close. 
but not this next one. And these two, I, I kind of keep on the same shelf next to each other. Uh, this is the Mad Tonto from Kaiser. I was very excited about this damned design coming out. I like damned design. And a lot had a very consistent design language in his folders. And one of those things are is this, this shape handle with those very broad fullers to the uh, broad to the point that they make the whole handle feel contoured. Um, to grow hollow ground, flat ground Tonto there. Just beautiful, beautiful knife. And a great working blade, very thin, very slicey. And that button is for, it's like those cell phones that have the really big numbers, you know, for the elderly and, and uh, hard of seeing. And uh, this button is kind of like that. It's It stands way proud and you don't have to do much to, to get it to close. So maybe, maybe uh, th with hard work and gripping it a certain way, you might be able to... Uh, accidentally actuate that lock easier than some others like the one i just had the send cut uh but i don't care that's not me and uh I, I like the added benefit of a button that sits proud where is it where is it sonny how do you unlock this thing oh here it is you know so yeah uh also again great micarta i do love uh, kaiser's micarta they they put some great stuff on their knives as does uh send cut civivi Okay, next is one of my favorite designers and knife makers with a licensed design to uh, EDC. I'm sorry, Beyond EC, and he's got he's got them licensed here at the Beyond EDC line, which is this was a thirty dollar knife, an amazing, they're probably the best thirty bucks I've spent in the knife hobby. Um, no joke, this is. Uh, an exclusive through uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and it's beyond EDC production and Dirk Pinkerton design, and it's a Navaja, buttery, buttery smooth. I mean, insanely smooth, um, and a great 14 C28 and blade, very, very sharp. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have the titanium version of this with the S35 EN, and this came sharper. It's sticky sharp. It's amazing, uh, and for 30 bucks, you can get the black the tan and the green version and and have some left over for coffee afterward uh just a really awesome knife um now beyond edc and their other two lines i think they're doing great stuff they're they're making these really really well built uh knives for a very low uh price point and um and so this is one of them, and I'm I'm really happy that they did this exclusive with um, with uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. If you're wondering where to get these awesome Navajas, uh, go check those out over there at Smoky Mountain. Uh, next up, this is a this is one uh, designed also by Colin Maison Pierre. This is a Kubi, and uh, Kubi knives, man, are very very well done. Um, I bought one to have as my quote unquote throwaway knife that I would travel to um, blade show with. And it's a great knife. Uh, really, really like it to the point where I got a couple of others. And this is the other one that I got from, or one of the other ones. This is a CM design and it's the Royal. And it's a very nice uh, utilitarian blade, but also very, I don't know, it's got a lot of panache. I love the long opening hole. That's D2 blade steel coated. I love the black next to the JG10. I've done a lot of work with this knife in particular because I've had it on me a lot. And uh, when things come up, I've been I've been using this quite a bit. Uh, the JG10 is very nice. And I also think it's neutral enough that it will take a, a it'll do well if I decide to dye this. Uh, but every time I get one of these uh, JG10 knives with the aim of dyeing them, I end up just liking the color and sticking with it. So uh, action on this is amazing. Kubi Knives uh, really ha has my attention. And they have a knife. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be getting it, so I'm not going to. 
I'm not going to talk about that one yet. Uh, but this is this the Kubi Royal. Next up, Artisan Cutlery. Uh, now, I have Artisan and CJRB in this list. Uh, CJRB is the budget line. Uh, but this thing, man, I, I'm a huge, huge fan of this knife here. Uh, this is the Sirius by Ray Laconico. It is such a sleek and beautiful kind of perfect design. Uh, this one is slender and light and thin. It's got the sculpted uh, titanium handles and, or not handle, but uh, clip and contoured handles with a fuller groove down the middle. It's very comfortable, very slender, sleek and light, uh, but that's a three and a half inch blade. So a nice capable size. This is a great suit knife. Like you have light slacks on and you want a very capable knife over three and a half or at three and a half inches. This is a great, great knife. It, it comes in this AR RPM nine, their proprietary powdered steel, uh, or you can get it a more expensive version with the uh, Coral Micarta and um, S35 VN tumbled. And either way you get it, it's sleek and beautiful. You could pull it out at a dinner party or at a, at a work function and use it to cut something uh, and people wouldn't freak out. It's so, I, I, I don't think they would look at it. It's so clean and it's got such a nice gentlemanly design. I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but it's a very nice looking knife. Uh, so I love this. I love the artisan uh, knives in general. Um, I have a couple of other um, the proponents. Uh, I'm particular particular proponent of the mini proponent. Uh, so great knives coming out of artisan cutlery. Next is from CJRB, their sister brand, their <laughs> their cheaper brand, let's say. Uh, so this is the Scoria. Uh, a huge fan of this CJRB Scoria. I think the Pyrite is coming up behind this knife uh, right quick, but I've had this one for longer. I got this in a trade from a listener, and uh, um, he uh, he got the riffle. I traded this for the Civivi riffle. And I love the, the black and maroon. That really gets me. Very nice contoured. My car to handle is nice and thin. This is a great in the waistband um, uh, knife for me in the summertime when I'm wearing shorts or that kind of thing. Um, uh, swimsuit, though uh, I have avoided carrying this right after swimming because I don't want the micarta to be bleached, and that happened to one of my other knives. Um, but a great, great working blade, nice and thin, thinly ground, saber ground. That's a very thin grind. Very nice for all sorts of duty around the house. Uh, great choil there. And every once in a while, I will carry this just for the beauty. I think it's actually a very uh, pretty blade, a pretty knife all around, whether you're looking just at the uh, silhouette of it or this one in particular with that maroon and black. Very nice looking knife. Okay, so that is, uh, that, is that. And then next up is the, oh, this is a nice one, the Vosteed, the Vosteed Nightshade. This one has that audaciously downward curved uh, leaf-shaped blade. And man, is that a, a great setup for work because uh, it's it acts like a recurve. You're accelerating the cut as you just pull uh, against whatever the medium is you're cutting. Um, looks a little bit like a kukri. Looks a little bit like a barong. Um, I love the leaf shape, though. Full height crowned spine, full height flat grind, crown spine, jimping, really nice buttery action and uh, contoured handle scales. This one now comes with an opening hole and no flipper. Uh, so either way, you win. Just a, sweet, a very cool knife. And, uh, and like I said, a great worker. And it reminds me of the Lum, uh, the Bob Lum Chinese folder, I think it was called. It was a, uh, a leaf shape knife that he did for Spyderco that had a similar sort of handle to blade angle uh, and a similar leaf shaped blade. Uh, this is the Vosteed Nightshade and Man Alive. Is it a sweet one? Okay, next up, speaking of which, is the Petrified Victor. 
Now the petrified fish, uh, sorry, petrified fish, Victor. Uh, I was looking for the beluga. I wanted to get the beluga. I had one on loan from, uh, who did I have that from? Mm. Hero Sticks. I really liked it. And I was looking for one and came across the Victor. And it was right before it kind of dropped here. So no, no problem getting it. And you could get it in this denim micarta with the satin blade or the coated blade with the green micarta and now that i think about it i should have gotten both should have gotten both just a beautiful bowie blade with that upswept swedge and uh that point is still remaining midline but uh but you have a nice curve in that swedge and uh, and a good straightaway there this is d2 isn't it uh Oh, no, this is K110, so uh, a steel analogous to D2, but not D2 itself. Very nice action. That uh, micarta has really taken on my funk, which I love, and is patinaed nicely. You can see this milled-out pocket on the back side, or it depends. If you're a lefty on the front side, you can slow roll it using that, or uh, you can use it to spidey flick. Um, so designed by a knife lover, no doubt, and... Uh, Bowie lover also because that blade shape is just gorgeous. You can see the grind lines in there too. Very very nice. Uh, so yeah, petrified fish. Weird weird name. They make some really really great things. Very very nice knives. Again for a song. All right, uh, second to last in this list is the TS three hundred one, the Tucson. And this one really won my heart. Uh, I had seen them for a long time and uh, really loved, say, like Jared Neves' enthusiasm for Tucson uh, earlier on. Well, can you just, but there was never a design that really got me until I saw this one. Uh, this one really did get me. Uh, that up trail, uh, upswept clip point blade, um, the, the high, high flat grind, knew it was going to be a great slicer. Um, and then this uh, faux bolster handle with the carbon fiber meeting the micard and then shadow box by the titanium. Just a great and beautiful knife and a workhorse. Um, also, it's a bit of a bolster lock, I guess you could say, even though, um, well, I don't know. What do you call this? It's, it's a bit like a frame lock just with overlays. So maybe we'll call it that. Um, but amazing action. Uh, this one has D2 blade steel. Uh, the, the original one had 14C28N. This brand also features other higher end steels and uh, still for a pretty good, um, you know, a very good deal. Look at the sharpening choil on this one. You could sharpen that for quite a while uh, with the plunge grind they gave you. Um, yeah, this is just a great, great knife and the action is great. It feels really uh, melts into the hand you could do a lot of work with this knife and not really get fatigued but all that being said they're very artful and uh, beautiful here's here's the one i was carrying today these are the only two i have and i'm not uh constantly on the hunt for for new ones uh, a lot of them design wise a lot of these two sun knives are just uh too many notes for me personally but these two show a restraint that I love. Okay, lastly in this list, uh, this is a big, big favorite of mine because it's coming from Concept, who I love, and this is Dirk Pinkerton, also a designer and maker that I love. And this one is the um, Main Street. They had one called the Mini Main Street, and this one was labeled as such, the Little Main Street, I'm sorry. When these came out, the, the big ones got labeled little ones. So this is a, a historic run, and I could get millions of dollars for this uh, if I were to sell it. But I'm not going to because it is a great, great EDC. Uh, I, I do, this is the one that I did bleach uh, by throwing in my, in my wet swimsuit pocket. This had a nice, nicely patinaed uh, show side. The, the, this uh, clip side has retained some of that patina but this side really has uh, so it's kind of like having a brand new knife but i've done a lot of work with this knife and this spent a lot of time in the waistband uh, when i was kind of 
in a period of not carrying my fixed blades on a daily basis. So uh, this one has nice bearing action, but it's just thumb stud, which I love. And then it has that uh, run of Pinkerton style jimping, which is the half cups uh, engraved on either side. It gives you a nice uh, length for your thumb to rest on and that nice, long, straight, flat edge, which is great for utility and great for self-defense. And that's something Dirk Pinkerton is always paying attention to with all of his knife designs is, is it utilitarian and is it good for self-defense? And I appreciate that sentiment. Well, that about does it for my list of overseas budget folder favorites. And I have a bunch of others, but uh, you get the idea. I think I had one from each of the major companies here. I can't believe there are 12. And I didn't have a Wii, didn't, didn't have a Riot, uh, which I could have, but I didn't. Maybe next time. Uh, those ones aren't so budget, I guess. All right, so be sure to join us on Sunday for Eddie Macho Diaz of His Knives. He's got a couple uh, licensed with Kaiser, and he's doing some really cool custom stuff and has a, quite an amazing mentor uh, that he hangs out with and learns knife making from. So definitely check that out right here on the Knife Junkie Podcast. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.